Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fratworks. On this week's video we're going to be taking a closer look at a rather guilty new purchase of mine and that is a Gibson 2009 Custom Shop, we'll get onto that in a minute, 339. Now, if you're not prior acquainted with a 339, essentially it's a 335 scaled down to roughly Les Paul sized. Introduced in 2007, and again, depending on where you read, they either are still made or they were discontinued last year. I've found a couple of guitars referenced to be 2019 models, but I've also read a couple of posts that would imply that in light of Gibson's Chapter 11, they've maybe scaled the range back. I couldn't find them on the Gibson website. So again, I don't know whether these are still made or not. But as I said, in regard to specs, it's essentially a 335 scaled down to the size of a Les Paul. Now, I'm not a particularly small guy, um, but undeniably, 335 is a slightly cumbersome guitar. Um, not so much when you're playing live, stood up, but if you're sat down, if you're trying to get comfy on a sofa, just noodling away, it's a little bit of a kind of a heft. Um, and for that reason, I've always kind of just struggled with them a little bit. Um, they're gorgeous guitars, they sound fantastic, but just kind of been on the lookout for something similarly voiced but a little bit smaller and that is undoubtedly where the 339 comes in. first became aware of these guitars a few years ago but it's only in recent months that I've kind of really ramped up my interest in actually trying to get hold of one. I played a gorgeous one on Denmark Street in 6060 Sounds, I do believe the shop is called. Big shout out to Jan for being so incredibly helpful in there. Um, that was a Sunburst model that was slightly out of my price range unfortunately and has since sold um, if their Instagram post is anything to go by. But it kind of sort of set the ball in motion of me really kind of taking this seriously and trying to find one in antique red or cherry red, depending on what you want to call it. Um, a good mate of mine happened to have one down in Swansea in South Wales, which he let go to me um, for a little bit of a song. So thank you, Ross. But depending on kind of where you're looking, the price range for these tends to be in between about the £1,500 mark and two grand, in between that kind of territory somewhere. Again, as with most guitars, it underwent a little bit of a kind of a change at some point around 2014 onwards, and they ceased to be marked as custom shop. Now, to get into that, um, sadly for me, doing the research prior to buying this guitar into what it really is, it's kind of indicative of the kind of murky waters that Gibson have found themselves in recently that, again, nobody can kind of categorically, unequivocally tell me whether this guitar is a custom shop. In the sense that it wasn't made at Gibson Nashville, which is their custom shop shop, um, it's not. It was made in Gibson Memphis, but for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, it's branded as a custom shop. As I said, at a certain point, they ceased to be branded as custom shop. They did away with the CS serial numbers and the custom shop logo on the back of the headstock. And from now, what I've actually found online is they're branded um, as Gibson just Gibson, with the F hole on the tress rod cover, which is indicative of Gibson Memphis being in charge of the ES line of guitars, and the serial numbers have moved over to an ME serial number. Again, as I said, it's a little bit of kind of murky water, and as much as this guitar may have a Gibson Custom Shop case, Gibson Custom Shop Certificate of Authenticity and a Gibson Custom Shop logo on the back of the headstock, I'm going to edge my bets and say that given I paid 1250 quid for this guitar, it's probably not a custom shop. 1200 quid, 1500 quid, even up to two grand, it's not really Gibson Custom Shop prices, to be honest. So make your own mind up on that. If you know unequivocally what the kind of situation is, please do let me know in the comments. Any info on this guitar would be greatly appreciated. Um, much the same as my uh, Fender Highway 1s that I play. Given this was introduced in 2007, I guess a lot of the kind of the marketing bump that would have come with these guitars probably would have been in print media format. So there's not a huge amount of info online unless you're kind of delving into the Les Paul forum or the gear page or any of that kind of stuff. And again, it's forum posts. It's not really kind of cited. Who knows how kind of reliable that is ultimately. But anyway... All of that kind of nonsense out of the way, what does it play like? And I can say it is an absolutely beautiful guitar, whether it's Gibson Memphis, whether it's Gibson Custom Shop, or whether it's made down the road, I don't really care. It plays beautifully well, it sounds amazing. I dropped the, I do believe they're 57 Classic Humbuckers, I'm not entirely sure on that. I dropped them down a little bit, and it's given it a little bit more of an airy tone. Not as airy as a 335, um, but there is more air ultimately in a 335, so that kind of makes sense. Um, and tonally, it does kind of sit somewhere between a 335 and a Les Paul, which, given it's a 335 that is Les Paul shaped, kind of makes sense. I would say it's a little bit tighter and a little bit just more concise, if that's even a word to describe a guitar, than a 335. It's a little bit sharper, a little bit tighter, a little bit more Les Paul-esque, ultimately. 
Um, does its thing incredibly well. Plays beautifully. The one kind of uh, reoccurring bit of criticism I've read of these guitars is that access to the upper frets is slightly more limited than on a 335. I would concur with this, uh, but again, as with most kind of situations like that, there are workarounds, there are ways of just altering your hand position very slightly to accommodate. Uh, but ultimately, what are you doing on the 21st fret? There's no money to be made up there anyway. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It plays beautifully. It sounds great. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit in love with it, to be honest. Um, I've only had it a week now but I've played it more in this last week than any other guitar. There's probably a little bit of a case of uh, what my wife calls last gig syndrome in that way. I tend to think the last gig that I went to was the best gig I've ever been to. So I've no doubt my uh, honeymoon period with, with this guitar will settle down at some point. But in the meantime, I'm head over heels in love with it. Irrespective of where it was made, who made it, whether it's a custom shop or not, it doesn't really matter. It's a beautiful guitar. That sounds a little bit like you're about to hear on the outro. As ever, thank you very much for watching this. I'm Chris Buck. This has been Friday Fretworks. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, it would be amazing. Maybe leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed it or not. And I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers, guys. Take care and I shall see you soon.